Hey, what's up everyone? So this morning I've got to build some uh, circuit boards and I'm going to use the pick and place. And I thought I'd just show you the process um, because it's not as straightforward as you might think using a machine. Especially this one which has a lot of uh, quirks and annoying things that it does. And also every board is basically different so we can go through that process. This is the board here. Um, I'll show you what it does at the end but it's a board that will be installed in the uh, Crunch Labs building, so I'm building stuff for that. And right off the bat, um, you know, I've made a, a 3D printed jig for the LEDs for a reason that I'll show you. And uh, then we've got, it only has, I don't know, it only has maybe eight different components, nine. I like making little 3D printed jigs for this that hold the components. Um, often because I'm only making a few boards. Because one of the really nice things about this is not having to place the components really precisely on the board. Like, if I have to take them out of a tray, if I have to take them off of a tape and put them in a tray, that's super easy. Uh, but it's the actual, like, process of putting them on the board nicely right in position that this takes care of. That helps so much. And that's where I use it most often. It's just like taking away that fine detail. So part of the reason I've got the tray there is for the addressable LEDs. And the reason why I have a tray instead of a tape is because it was sort of a quick project to put together. Um, I didn't order like a reel from uh, Alibaba or AliExpress or something. I just got these packs which uh, Adafruit sells and they, are, uh, they come in packs of 10. So you can't just get a reel from DigiKey which is kind of annoying but uh, you, you think they would at this point. So they come in these 10, strips of 10, and then I take them out and I put them in that tray. And again, that like saves me a bunch of time. So I can put like 48 in that tray and that'll do four boards. So I'm actually using this Robin's Pixel Pump. Uh, it's awesome. He sent it to me a long time ago and I've been meaning to do a video on it, so sorry I haven't done that yet, but uh, I really haven't had too many circuit board uh, builds that required it. But now that I'm using it, I wish I was using it sooner. It's amazing. So it's for picking up components, uses a pedal, and uh, you can just, you press the pedal, creates a vacuum, and then you just pick up the component and you can place it down. It's super amazing, especially for something like this. So if I put it in uh, drop mode, that's where the pedal makes it drop instead of pick up. I find it's easier when I'm doing this, so I just pick up an LED and I place it in the tray. And I can get into a pretty good rhythm of this when I'm not holding a camera, of course. So once I fill up this tray, I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but this, this makes it way easier to place components because I'm not actually placing them on the board itself. So I'm able to do each process and it uh, ends up saving a lot of time. So there's, a, uh, there's another reason why I prefer to make my own trays. Um, and that's because of the way that this machine feeds the tape and how much waste there is. Um, a lot of this time, I mean, this machine does not have a good feeder method. I'm just gonna outright say it. It's, it's horrible. It's based on friction on the rubber, pulling the, the, uh, the cover back and they all run off the same motor. And sometimes some will pull the tape out on their own because there's too much friction. And other times uh, some will not release the tape so then like the machine can't actually pick up the component. So by putting like the more expensive components in a pre-made tray or just leaving them on their own tape, it saves a lot of waste and headache. Like you don't want to keep skipping over your microcontroller and dropping them on the ground because the machine won't feed the tape properly.
Yeah, so that only took about a minute to fill those in. But if I was to put those on a circuit board by hand, that would take like an hour. I don't know, but that'll get me four boards. Okay, now that we've got all the components set up in the machine, um, yeah, we'll turn it on. Here's another fun quirk of this machine, which is super annoying. It doesn't turn on unless you like touch the back connector and like add some capacitance or something. I don't know what it's doing, but uh, yep. I love closed source hardware. I really want to make like a new controller for this that I don't know. I can control. Anyways, I've already got the, uh, the stencil mounted in this uh, stencil tool. It's super useful, but again, takes time to set up. So if I'm just doing one board, I'll often not use this because um, you have to set these mount holes. The board has to have, well, in this case, three millimeter holes because um, every board is unique. And then you have to mount the stencil in here and um, get it all aligned. So you can see I've already done a bunch of boards so it's already worn out a bit. Then you just put some uh, solder paste on here, way too much, and you squeegee it on. Just like that. And then I just place it in these, uh, there's a couple of 3D printed mounts that are just magneted on here. And you can kind of, you can change them around to any board size. And you align it to this corner here. And this is the first board of the day, so I'm going to hit start and I'm sure there'll be something wrong. But we'll see how it goes. It's all aligned. Hit mount. And, uh... Should be good to go. Looking good. Now when you've got a smaller board like this, it's a lot less nerve wracking. See, it just missed that one because the tape did not move. So now it's gonna scrap that resistor because that's just how this machine works. But like I was saying, it's a lot less nerve wracking when it's uh, low components like this because you can kind of see what it's doing and if it makes a mistake, just did it again, so I gotta fix that. Um, you can also pause it in the middle. And I've got a weight on the tape down here, which I'll show you in a second. I had a weight on the tape so I fixed that. So the whole benefit of this machine is not that you can just, like you can go hands free, but realistically you wanna be here and watch it. But um, once you've got it set up like this, then each board takes like two minutes Picks up the LEDs. Placing each one of these would be a nightmare, but once they're in that little pocket, it just handles it all for you. It's great. Now one of the things is these feeders if they're not pushed down all the way, it'll pop them all out, which can be really annoying. Uh, but this one seems to be working. And it's usually right at the start. Once you get into the middle, it works a lot better. This is specifically to my machine, of course. And with this one, you just have to hand remove the, uh, the tape. microcontroller and that's it for the surface mount components yeah you can see once you get it set up 
then uh, it's super quick and it saves you all the tedious work. So that's, that's really where the machine shines. Also, the thing that I fixed before was I, add, I sometimes add some weight on these um, to pull the tape. Because like I was saying, I'll show you after, but sometimes this tape doesn't get pulled back. And there's settings that you could probably tune on a good machine that will let you fix that, but, um, but on this machine they just don't give you that option. Okay, so uh, let's do three more. And just like that, you've got four completed boards. So I'm kind of doing batches of four for this. And we just stick them in the reflow oven. I finally uh, upgraded to a uh, Controlio 3 oven. And it's been working well. So I just stick those in. And run the profile. Oh, by the way, before I forget, I've been uh, streaming on Twitch, just kind of hanging out, doing some CAD work, usually in the evening between 7 and 9 Eastern. So I'd love it if you come out, give me a follow, do whatever, just hang out for a bit. It's been pretty fun, and I might even uh, do some soldering and uh, pick-and-place machine action, maybe on the weekend or something. So I'd appreciate it. And while that is baking, I will uh, repopulate the... LEDs and add another row of uh, resistors and move over some microcontrollers and the uh, voltage regulator. Now that these are done, I usually just like to open that up, let them cool off, and I'll move on to the next batch. So now I've got four more boards to do, but the real question. Do you think you need a pick and place machine? Well, the answer is it really depends how many boards you're making. If you're making 10 boards, then I would say definitely get a pixel pump. I should do a video on that. But that is like a, a good you know, surface mount setup where you can pull the components out and take them with a pixel pump. That is so fast. Um, if you're doing like more than 10 boards, it starts to become a pain. I'd say definitely get a stencil machine because, again, lining up stencils and being able to do multiple boards is awesome. But uh, specifically a Neoden YY1, well, you saw the quirks. So has it been very useful? Yes. Has it also caused me to be Annoyed a lot of the time? Yeah, that's also happened. Uh, you probably saw it in the mask build as well. Absolutely essential for that. Uh, but again, I had to watch it the whole time. So it's not just like you hit it and you go. It's, it, it'll let you know when it's not picking up a component. So if you're off doing other things, it'll beep at you when uh, something bad happens, uh, like it misses a component too many times, um, and it will warn you. But there's just some little things, like some settings that I would love to be able to change. Like when it doesn't pick up a component, I would love the option in here to say repeat pickup. So like if the tape doesn't get moved in time and the head comes over and it tries to pick it up and the tape's in the way, I don't want it to try and pull the tape out again because that wastes the component. That's super annoying. So that's why you don't really want to put any expensive components in these reels because when it skips over them, it just tosses them on the floor. Um, so I'd rather it try and roll the tape up again instead of trying to pull this forward and give it a second shot or a third shot or have a setting where it lets me choose how many times I want to do that. That's a huge one. Another thing, I made this little bracket here because there was a rubber one that only stopped the downward motion and it was getting stuck in the upward motion. So it would get, it would take too long for it to plunge down so it would move forward. Again, these are all settings that they could put into this machine. There are some settings, but not enough. And also, if you want to update, like, 
the firmware on this. Like you have to replace this, and I think you have to replace the main board because you can't reprogram them. So that is just, that is just dumb. I hate it. Which is why I kind of want to just stick a pie in here, remake their old board, have it control everything, and then there you go. But do you really want to pay, like, I don't know how much it is now, put in your own custom circuit board on? I don't know. So yeah, frustrating, also helpful. So uh, that's it. I'm not, uh, I'm not telling you to go out and buy one, but you can make it work. And also, if your boards aren't very complicated, it's super useful. So if you're just making simple, simple boards all the time, it'll definitely improve your life a little bit. So that's all I have to say about that. I have a couple more boards to do and some hand soldering, but I'll get to that. Oh yeah, let me show you what the board does. So these are going to be installed in a railing along some stairs, and when your hand runs along it, they'll light up. But these are all RGB, so uh, you can get some really cool colors, and also they'll be daisy chained. They don't send five volts through, so I've only got five volts connected here. They'll be daisy chained, and they'll also be connected to a um, pixel blaze so you can make the railing do all sorts of cool stuff. So, um, yeah, fun little project and uh, I'll probably be able to release this one uh, open source. Um, yeah, so if other people wanted to make them, but maybe I'll do a video on them. Anyways, everyone, that's just kind of my take on the uh, Neoden YY1 and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's really all I have to say about it. But if you do want something truly open source, you should actually check out the Lumen PNP by uh, Opulo, my friend Steven. It's a fully open source machine and it's really cool what they're doing. So you should check that out. I should probably be running one, to be honest. Anyways, hope you enjoyed. See ya. And the next batch.